course, we need to talk about Man United's embarrassing, embarrassing 4-0 defeat at the hands of Liverpool away from home in the Premier League. Now, all in all, the result wasn't a, a the result wasn't a surprise. But the thing with football that's interesting, despite how much time, especially as a fan, you try to sort of condition yourself to the impending doom that's about to arrive in terms of a bad performance or a bad result because you're emotionally invested in the club and you support it and you want to see them do well seeing them not do well in real time always hurt it's always going to pull at the, the, the heartstrings and it's always going to fill you with sadness especially if you're a fan like myself who was never deluded and always knew that this idea that the managers were always solely to blame for Man United's demise was always a lie. And it had more to do with the fact that we are owned by maybe some of the worst football owners in the history of the game in the Glazers. And they have installed some of the most inept people at the boardroom level to make the football decisions that we've ever seen in the history of the game also. So much so that we are probably one of the worst run clubs in the world, given our stature, given our history, given our resources, our money we generate. We are 100% one of the worst run clubs in the world, hands down. And unfortunately for us, the other clubs in and around, in and amongst us in the Premier League, the other clubs in Europe, the other clubs around the world even have all caught up off the field in terms of their structure, in terms of their commercial side, their scouting um, their player recruitment, their youth teams, all this stuff that you would say the bigger teams had big advantages in, they have now basically caught up. And even if you look at the Premier League, the money is, you know, bigger than, the money is kind of larger than it's ever been in the Premier League. So if you're a small club, you can maybe afford to hold on to some of your talented young players and basically give them the carrot that they'd be able to play first team football at the ages, you know, between the ages of like 17 and 21, more so than going to a top team, which then limits these top teams from poaching all of the young talent from up and coming clubs or from clubs in a championship or clubs, you know, outside of the top six or whatever it may be. So that's basically led to the situation we're in now. So we basically got away with it for a long time under the Glazers because number one, we had a flipping legendary once in a lifetime manager, Sir Alex Ferguson. But we also got away with it because at the time the competition in amongst us outside of the top four wasn't that great, especially in the Premier League and also out in Europe. But now that the other clubs have caught up and we are still doing the same things that we did when we had Sir Ferguson and just hoping that we somehow stumble across a genius manager, we are at where we are. And now at the moment where, you know, basically away from, I think when you combine the home defeats and away from home, we've now lost 9-0 to our fiercest rivals at Liverpool. Now, don't get me wrong. Liverpool are challenging for the Premier League title. They're challenging for the Champions League, domestic cups. Like, they're on another planet. But you still wouldn't think, when it comes to Derby Day, there'd be such a kind of chasm, chasm, whatever you say that word, in difference in quality. The golf in quality is just another on another level. That game was really sobering to watch as a fan. Incredibly sobering to watch it in real time and see just how far away we are from them not even as a club just as as players as men as expectations like those guys gave up on a pitch pretty sharp as soon as that first goal went in a four minute mark a lot of us fans myself included were like oh no this might be another five we might get hit for 10 because you could see the players on the pitch especially my name players were already scared they were worried they didn't think that we could have a way to get back into this game and you know of course that kind of played out to be the way it did and if you look at some of the stats of the game itself it's pretty alarming in terms of kind of telling you the story of of who is the better team on the day united had um two shots to liverpool's 14 one shot on target to liverpool's five we had 28 percent of the ball possession they had 72 we had 349 passes they had 879 we had 73 percent pass accuracy they had 90 90 <laughs> And I'm actually surprised the yellow cards aren't as more or the fouls aren't as aren't triple the amount because you'd imagine if you're getting beat or humiliated in the way that we were against your fiercest rival, one of the first things you kind of draw for as a sportsman is just to 
will G yourself up with attitude and aggression and just go in for a flying tackle just to kind of set the move and restart things and wake your teammates up. Didn't happen until the very end, until Hannibal came on. One of our youth team players came on, started rattling players and actually looked like he had a bit of pride. He had a bit of embarrassment. He had a bit of shame. The fact that our local rivals were pinging the ball around us and making us look like mugs. But that didn't last for long because for after that, things kind of just petered out and we ended up losing 4-0. We were lucky not to kind of hit, get hit with five, to be completely honest. Um, Ralph Ragnick has some really interesting words to say about the entire performance that I thought was um, refreshing. And I think overall, even though Ralph Ragnick's um, interim spell at United hasn't been the most revolutionary that we would have hoped it hasn't had the impact we all hoped it would do in terms of him coming in under this big um, reputation of being the master of gag and press and building up clubs and being somebody that works as a football director and helps to you know um get the clubs where they need to be and get them on the equal footing blah 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 blah, blah making competitive it didn't happen he probably didn't have enough time enough resources regardless of what it is he didn't have the impact that he needed to have but i think as a human i think as a as a professional um, as a coach, as a football person, with his frankness and his honesty and the fact that he is an external person who has no ties to United before this time at United, that he's been here for the interim boss and in the two years he's going to be as a consultant, it's been refreshing to hear him speak so frankly and upfront about the issues that we have. And I have hope that, or I know that, because United are very attuned to public perception, they don't like, they don't like being embarrassed, they don't like being humiliated, they know they don't run well but they just don't want to change anyway they're gonna probably change how we are run and put some place put some changes in place just because of how honest and upfront ralph has been and how he exposed them they're gonna want to correct it so that's been the benefit of having him as a manager even though it hasn't been successful on the pitch i think off the pitch the benefits are going to be felt for a long long time going forward because i think if we didn't have this with ralph i don't see it changing because results don't really seem to impact the way the board moves in general trophies droughts and stuff don't just dis don't decide that either quality of football doesn't decide that either so sometimes getting beaten humiliated week in week out against your fiercest rivals dropping lower and lower on the table so you don't get you know um certain positions you know basically equate to certain prize money being dished out you don't obviously finish in the european places that obviously limits the amount of money you're going to make all these things affect the bottom line of the glazers which is the main thing they kind of live by so if that happens maybe some change will happen but anyway this is a ralph ragnick talking after the game regarding his comments with how terrible united were against liverpool ralph the the first half nothing really went right for you obviously an early injury an early goal as well um, you changed the formation. Do you regret the formation that you started with? Do you perhaps wish you'd played a, a four rather than a three or a five? I don't think that this would have changed <laughs> anything, to be honest. Uh, um, the first goal that we conceded uh, was not part of the game plan to be that high up and, and, uh, and concede a, a counter-attack like we did after, the fifth, after five minutes. Um, and that changed, obviously, the, 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 the game. Um, and uh, yeah, in the first half, we were just not good enough. We didn't win any first ball, not to speak second balls. We were just second best in all relevant areas. And um, second half, yes, we decided to replace one of our center backs by, by Jaden Sancho. Uh, the first 25 minutes, we were better in the game. We had uh, pressure on the ball, at least at times, had two or three moments ourselves, but the third goal then killed the game off. I felt that goal, the third goal for Liverpool, almost came as a relief. They were. They didn't start the second half very well. You looked much brighter, and it looked like you know a United goal at that stage might change things. But obviously, at three nil, it's almost impossible here. Yes, I agree. That's why I said the third goal just finished the game off. Uh, again, a ball that we shouldn't have played. Uh, pressing invitation. If you play a 12-yard ball into Antonio Langa, who is a player for the ball behind the their back line. Um, this is uh, inviting them for exactly those kind of moments, and six seconds later, we, we the ball was in our it was in our net. Um, it, there were that little period of positives, but this is a very difficult result for Manchester United fans to take on the back of the game at Old Trafford before you arrived. You know, this this is two games in which Liverpool have really crushed Manchester United, and that's very hard for United fans. I know. Uh, it's embarrassing, it's, it's, it's disappointing, it's 
maybe even humiliating, but yeah, we just have to accept that uh, they are six years ahead of us now. I mean, when Jurgen Klopp came uh, and what they changed at this club, they lifted the whole club, the whole, not only the team, the whole club, the city to a completely different level. And this is what has to happen here in the next transfer windows. The crazy thing is, he said, Liverpool are six years ahead of us. Six years. If he's saying that, with his kind of external point of view, not knowing how terrible of owners the Glazers are, and the fact that they've sold every manager that's been at United Dreams, in terms of signings, in terms of you know revamping the squad, getting players out, getting players in. If he's saying six years, then it's safe to say it's going to be another 10 years until United are a title-winning, Champions League competing club again. I don't mean winning those things. I mean, look, let me change it. It's going to be 10 years until United are another Premier League challenging, Champions League challenging club. I don't even mean winning them. Just challenging and being in and amongst it. The same way Chelsea were in the beginning of the season and they kind of tailed off. That kind of way. Maybe you're like six, eight, ten points within range. It's going to be another 10 years until that happens on a consistent basis. 10 years. And you know what's really concerning? There's no guarantee the teams in and amongst us are going to stay stagnant. There's already talk already at the moment that supposedly Erling Haaland has decided his next club is going to be Man City. If that's the case and City decide, oh sorry, and Pep decides to stay at City for another three seasons, what can they do? given the resources, given the actual football people they have in charge. That's another challenge for Klopp to kind of respond to. He's going to respond. The new owners of Chelsea are going to come in. They're going to respond. We are in for a dark period in time in the United history as United fan. Dark, dark period. It's really, truly concerning. It really, really is. But, you know, 